Hi, I'm Michelle Lam, and today I'll be talking about model sketching. Let's say that you're a machine learning practitioner working on a social media site, and you've been asked to create a model to flag hateful image memes. Soon, you're deep in tasks like analyzing and processing data, experimenting with different machine learning model architectures and objective functions, and adjusting various settings and hyperparameters, all to get to the very first version of your model. What if we had a totally different way of building machine learning models? What if we could start by first deciding what our model cares about? Is hate defined by profanity, by racism, by misogyny? Does this cover all of the forms of hate that we need to handle? And what does our platform think constitutes profanity, racism, or misogyny? What's our model's stance on how these ideas intersect with controversial topics like policing or dangerous directions like violence? And how should it navigate subtleties like sarcasm? If we could iterate on models in this way, we could focus our attention on the human impact and ethical implications of our models much earlier in the process. These are questions that we can't answer when we're down deep in the technical details of data pipelines and hyperparameters. The problem here is that today's tools pull us into a tunneling mindset focused on technical implementation. When we actually need to break out of this tunneling and we focus our attention on exploring high-level design directions. Designers have seen this mistake before, and instead of jumping straight into implementation, they've long turned to a practice of sketching as a cognitive tool to help them rapidly explore high-level design possibilities. We address this gap in machine learning by introducing model sketching, a technical framework that allows ML practitioners to create sketch-like machine learning models as a tool for thinking. Sketching is about finding a minimal representation, capturing the right details and abstracting away everything else. So what should a sketch of an ML model look like? We argue that often discussed components like performance metrics and model architectures don't focus us on the right details. To reason over the values embedded in a model, we need to be able to iterate over its decision-making logic, the factors that our model should reason over to make its decisions, which will carry over to a full production model. In our work, we focus on concepts as the minimal representation for ML sketches, where we define concepts as human understandable ideas that are relevant to a decision-making task like profanity and misogyny for the task I described earlier. This choice of concepts as our core sketching abstraction also nicely aligns with the way that people tend to reason about modeling tasks, and it aligns with the way that even complex black box production AI systems are often decomposed into submodels whose overall goals are interpretable. Now that you have a feel for this model sketching approach, I'll show you how we brought it to reality with Model Sketchbook, a tool that we developed for ML practitioners to incorporate model sketching into their workflow. Model Sketchbook is an open source Python package designed for use in computational notebooks like Jupyter and Colab, which is where our target audience of ML practitioners already commonly carries out model development work. To get started on the same hateful memes task I described earlier, I would just need to import our Python package. Then I create a sketchbook that will store all of my work. Setting up a sketchbook involves passing in a data frame of 40 to 50 examples with raw image and text fields and overall ground truth labels. Then I can go ahead and get started on creating concepts. For example, if I wanted to try to capture issues with xenophobic memes, I could start by selecting a text column from the dataset and providing a concept term of xenophobia. The system will then return results on my training dataset in a table view so that I can see the results that did or did not match with the xenophobia concept. Depending on how well this concept aligns with the idea of the concept in my mind, I could explore other related concept terms or alternative input fields. This concept model is powered by pre-trained models. Given the concept term and data field, we can use models like GPT and CLIP to surface concept scores for each example with no training time. So maybe I discovered that my first concept worked fairly well for this dataset, but I noticed some problematic content involving policing. I could explore this direction by selecting a column containing images and providing a concept term like police. I'll again see a table view with results sorted by concept scores so that I can see which examples came up as most aligned with my specified concept. This process leads me to come up with other example concept ideas, and after I've created some more concepts, I can create sketches that combine those concepts. I can select several of my concepts that I've already authored and specify an aggregation model. Then, our sketch model works by training the specified linear regression model on our small hand-labeled training dataset of 40 examples. It uses the concept scores as input and generates sketch predictions so that the model will predict the overall hatefulness labels. 
The output includes some brief model details and performance metrics, as well as a comprehensive table view of the sketch model results on the training set. This includes all of the input fields, concept scores, sketch prediction, ground truth labels, and errors, which users can sort and skim through to identify patterns and failure modes in their sketch model. From there, I can continue to iterate on my sketches by creating concepts that address gaps in my models and incorporating those into sketches. I can repeat this process with concepts and sketches until I've explored a broad range of modeling approaches. These core building blocks enable a model sketching interaction where users can articulate these high-level ideas that they want their model to reason over. So Model Sketchbook brings this vision of model sketching to life, but how does it work in practice? How might model sketching change the way developers think, and how might it shift their modeling outcomes? We designed a field evaluation with machine learning practitioners who have a substantial experience authoring ML models in their work. We wanted these users to work on a realistic modeling task, so we selected the hateful memes challenge that we've been using as a running example, because it is technically challenging, since it involves interacting image and text modalities, involves subjective judgment, which provides a broad model design space, and involves ethical trade-offs, which require users to consider multiple competing viewpoints. To test the limits of our approach for rapid authoring, we had participants use our model sketchbook tool in a collab notebook during a one-hour session. Before we dive into the main results, I want to highlight that all of these results came from under half an hour of modeling, compared to participants' own estimates of days or weeks to develop a model for this task. During this evaluation, participants came up with 136 distinct concepts, a sampling of which are shown here. Participants were able to come up with unique concepts that no others had used across text, image, and logical concept types. We noted two high-level results. First, we saw ML practitioners shift from a low-level technical focus to high-level conceptual experimentation. Then, we found that rapid iteration allowed for broad exploration of the model design space, as well as early identification of modeling gaps. These results break down further into several trends, but for the sake of time, I'll preview two of our findings. We observed a shift in participants' modeling plans. When describing their modeling approach prior to learning about model sketching, users largely focused on lower-level implementation tasks such as specific modeling methods or architectures and ML conventions like train test splits and performance metrics. However, after using model sketching, participants shifted to plan their work around higher-level design exploration, such as ways that they would brainstorm and iterate on concepts related to the decision-making task and authoring concepts based on different subclasses of harm. Then, this process also helped participants to identify gaps in other parts of the modeling task, including the problem formulation, data set, and labeling method. For example, users found that text seemed to be a more reliable indicator of harm than images for this task, but they identified cases where there was value in combining the modalities. They also gained greater respect for the nuance required to label memes. They also noted gaps in the data set, like lack of representativity of harms such as homophobia, violence, and nudity, and a larger issue that the data didn't match the kinds of memes commonly found online today. Participants also raised issues around class imbalance, label inconsistency, and low score granularity. We're excited about these different modes of thinking and different modeling outcomes that model sketching can promote, and we believe that this approach carries implications for how we approach human-AI interaction. First, we need more machine learning tools that support low-fidelity design exploration. While our approach shares motivations with interactive machine learning and interactive machine teaching around effective interaction and expressive teaching to improve models, we intentionally chose the metaphor of sketching to take a more particular stance, that to sort out the multiverse of potential models in the early phases of model development, we would benefit from expressly low-fidelity rather than high-fidelity models, sketching rather than implementation. Then, when we look at where fairness questions enter the picture in ML model development, it's often at the very early stages before model development with ethical frameworks and participatory approaches, or it's at the end of the cycle when models are evaluated with metrics and audits or repaired post hoc, which causes these really wide development loops that can take months or years to resolve. We believe that there's a huge opportunity to fill in this gap, and with model sketching, we weave these two approaches tightly together. By focusing on human understandable concepts and framing model errors and iteration around these concepts, we get ML practitioners thinking about normative value decisions early on. But by grounding these concepts in functional models with realistic data and performance metrics, they also get a grounded sense of their model's behavior and can bridge from sketches to production models. With that, we are excited to push forward on the vision of model sketching, which we view as an important step that moves beyond the mode of retroactively fixing broken models and towards one of helping ML practitioners to become better model designers from the start.